In this video, you're going to see how I modified a clock spring from a 1998 Jeep Cherokee to fit in this 2013 Jeep TJ. The only reason I'm doing this is because this part, which is year specific to the 2003, is currently unavailable. And I got to get this vehicle uh, buttoned up for a safety check. So I'll go through the steps. Uh, definitely do this at your own risk. Uh, we are playing here with airbags. Uh, good thing is, is that... It sure looks like to be the same component for the airbag system. So uh, here we go. Our O3 TJ has a little bit of a extra set of lights that I like to turn on right now. So if I start it over. The airbag light stays on. I'm going to check to see if the clock spring out of a 1998 Cherokee or an XJ can be adapted to work in here. Let's find out. So you want to make sure that your negative battery terminal is disconnected, uh, which still do use will all depend on what's what's been done to the vehicle over the years. This one I needed a combination of a 13 mil and 11 mil wrench. And now I can start removing the airbag from the steering wheel. On both sides of the steering wheel, there's going to be an 8mm wrench behind the airbag. So you loosen both sides, and after that, you can slowly pull out the airbag. So now the airbag is loose. So the important thing is there will be at least two wires behind here. This one doesn't have any cruise control, so that saves me one wire. But there's going to be one for the horn switch and another one for the airbag module. So those have to be disconnected. So with the airbag tilted forward, we can see the one here for the airbag. And then we can see the one here for the uh, horn. So I'll disconnect both. Uh, this one, if I remember correctly, you just pull it out. And this one, there's going to be a little tab here. A little tab right about there. So now's the right time to check the connections to the airbags. Uh, they look identical from uh, placement of the pins, which is a great thing. Uh, the way that the wires are running into the clock spring are the same. Airbag followed by the horn. Airbag followed by the horn. The connection to the horn button is a little different. So I'll probably end up just cutting this wire and graphing it onto this one. If this one doesn't clip into the pin. So we'll see you soon enough. 13 millimeter to get the bolt off of the steering wheel. Just make sure the steering wheel is straight and the tires are aligned forward before you start taking this apart. Gonna make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to reassembly. So normally once you've got this off, you need a puller to remove the steering wheel. I'll give it a few tugs before I go get the puller, but something tells me I'll end up getting the puller. So just remember that even if you don't have cruise control, you're gonna have the wires that go to the button. So just unplug them from the two sides. Then you start tightening this up. Again, the important thing here is keep your steering wheel straight. You're going to need this when it comes time to putting it back together. Depending on, on how things go, you may need a little bit more oomph than just turning it by hand, but it feels like it's coming along. And after you've, you've cracked it, it's going to get it easier because there's going to be less tension and you'll be able to turn it. And slowly the steering wheel is going to pull off the column. This is pretty much your last chance of making sure that your steering wheel is straight. It's going to be important for reassembly. And there, now it's loose. I'll be able to turn off by hand, but pull it off by hand. So hopefully yours has fewer cobwebs, but it is what it is. So there's two Phillips screws, one on either side that you unscrew from the bottom. Uh, there are some pressure clips on the side, so just be cautious as you're pulling it apart so you don't break anything. And then that'll happen, and then you can unplug the wire here so that you can then remove the original clock spring. So to be able to pop it out, the bottom uh, retaining clip was super easy. The top one, I actually used a pick up here to pull up the tab, then I pull down. Here we can see that there's a retaining clip here for the yellow plug, which is the airbag so you just pull on the tab pull it up turns out the other tab is at the bottom here so you got to pull the tab and then pull out the harness 
So now we can compare. The terminals on this side look identical. So from the right, we'd have the two separate wires, which are for the airbag, followed by, I'm assuming, would be the horn. After that, all the way to the left would be the wire for the cruise control. After trying to install this one, I realized that the diameter of the hole is very small compared to the one that came off. This one's about an inch diameter, so a little bit over 25 millimeters, and this one's about three quarters of an inch. So now I'm going to check, see if there's a way of just opening up that hole and being able to slide it into place. So I've enlarged the hole to match the, the size of this one just from within the pin to the pin. So now I'll remove my, my wire that keeps it from spinning, which was really important when expanding the hole. Uh, the bit I had was a step bit. It only had uh, 22, 23 millimeters and I had to expand this a little over 25. So now I'm going to slide it on and hopefully it'll fit. So after a little bit of finessing, uh, a few more times, a few more tries, it now slides in. It clips at both ends. It's a little snug, it do, it, so it's going to stay nice and tight to the steering column. Now it's time to reinstall the steering wheel. So while reconnecting everything, I was able to reach the horn wire to the connection point, plugged in the ABS, uh, not the ABS, the airbag wire, reinstalled the two 8mm bolts, reconnect to the battery. Now that I've got the Jeep buttoned up, if I turn the wheel, airbag should turn off. Yay. If I honk the horn, it works. So I'm pretty happy with this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.